when we hear about climate change, it's often doom and gloom scenario. It's very nice to talk to someone who sees it as a challenge, but a wonderful opportunity to work on and stays positive throughout the process that we will get there. Today on my podcast, I have a very special guest. Her name is Renata. She's a mechanical engineer. She's Mexican and German, and she loves robots and sustainable energy. Yet, Renata lives in Iceland and works in solving food waste. I'm very much looking forward to talk to her and to share her story with you. I'm Elena Doms, and this is the Interesting Times podcast powered by Think Tank Burgundia. Welcome. So hi, Renata. It's great to have you here today. How are you? Hi, Elena. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. I'm doing really well. <laughs> Renata, uh, can you tell us a bit more? I mean, you're Mexican and German. Uh, what are you doing in Iceland? Great question. So I originally moved to Iceland to study a master's. Mm -hmm. I have a background in mechanical engineering, uh, but I always viewed this this degree as like a stepping stone to my ultimate goal, which okay. was uh, contributing positively to the world. Mm -hmm. And there's many ways to do that. But the way that I think I could do that was by getting into sustainability. Okay. And Iceland is super cool with sustainability, specifically the sustainable energy. Okay. So a whole grid runs on fully renewable energy from hydropower and geothermal wow. power, which is wow. really cool. So that's obviously a great that's achievement student, I'm like, that's amazing. I need mm -hmm. to know how they do that. How can I get other places to do that? So I applied for a master's and I studied at the University of Reykjavik. So that's why I moved okay. over here. Yeah. All right. So you started renewable energy, yet you founded a company called Green Bites, uh, which helps restaurants to tackle food waste. How did you move from renewable energy to food waste? Well, there's a couple steps in between and a couple things that like all happened for this to eventually come together. Mm -hmm. um, so while I was doing my master's, I was working at a restaurant a mm -hmm. local juice bar and I was making juices and sandwiches, but I was also throwing away so much food. Um, after almost every shift, I'd like have to throw away like buckets and buckets of food. And like, I tried everything to like reduce that. I'd like take it home and like try to give some away. Um, and I even like made like a spreadsheet and of, of how much food of everything we threw away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey guys, let's like fill this out. And of course no one did. Cause like, no one wants to do extra work. They want to go home and they're tired. So I, that was one thing that like started to make me realize that food waste was a big problem. And then through this hackathon uh, called the Climathon, uh, which is this yearly hackathon that happens all over the world, um, mm -hmm. I learned about the environmental side of like food waste. Um, and that, I was like, okay, cool. And then put that back on the back burner and then continued my work in sustainable energy. And I specifically, as a mechanical engineer, focused on uh, wind energy. And I, when I graduated, I actually worked at the national energy company here called Landsvirkim in the wow. wind energy sector, okay. which was really, really great, a uh, really great learning experience. Um, and my job specifically was to look at future wind energy production potential, like figure out how much energy we can produce based on how much wind we think we're going to have. Mm -hmm. And the way that that was done was by using uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. And something kind of just clicked and I was like, these algorithms, we can use them to predict future food consumption. And so we could reduce food waste without having to record what we're throwing away or like weighing things or all that stuff. So I kind of just like started telling people at the, at the lunchroom what I was thinking about mm -hmm. and slowly uh, the idea developed more. And I reached out to one of my friends from the university. Her name is Jillian Verbert. Uh, now she's my CTO and co-founder. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's worked out well. And the reason I reached out to her is because she's super, super smart. 
and she was the teacher's assistant for the master's level machine learning course at the university. So okay. I was like, hey, I have this idea. I need some help. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> um, so she was like, yeah, sounds cool. And I think at the time we both thought that it was like maybe something small that we would get into. But mm -hmm. here we are like almost a year and a half later and we have incorporated and now we have like a minimum sellable product and we are doing this full time and have been for quite a bit. Wow. You know, I, I personally love this connection between the wind energy, the machine learning algorithm, and then all of a sudden food waste, you know? That was the first thing that I noticed when, when I met you. I was like, this is crazy. Maybe it's normal for you, but to me, it sounds really exciting. I don't know. The way I see things is in like metaphors and applying things that I know and like putting that picture on top of other things. So mm -hmm. sort of. I think it's sort of the way my brain is wired. Fascinating, really. And Renata, tell us how big is the food waste problem? Why did you decide oh my gosh, to tackle so it big. specifically? It's really? such a mess. Yeah, how, how big? Oh my. So one third, well, approximately one third of all food waste, food produced in the world uh, is lost or wasted. So that means that it is thrown away at some point of the food supply chain. And we have so and much this hunger is huge. This like so certain. much hunger. Like every wow. year, uh, mm -hmm. ever since like I want to say the past couple of years, hunger has been rising. Uh, so we're wasting more food. More people are going hungry, and we expect more people to be in the world. So we most often hear about how we have to produce more food. And sure, maybe we should, but also we should optimize the food system that we already have and use the resources that we have available to us because food is wasted and uh, thrown away after farming, during storage, mm -hmm. when there's shipments at grocery stores and restaurants, at households at every single step of its lifetime. Like so much food is thrown away. And, and it's one actually th one third is just mind blowing how much it's so much. It's, yeah. it's like if you have like what, six grocery bags and you leave two behind and you're like, that don't eat <laughs> I like that like, comparison too. <laughs> I, think I, I think the UK did a campaign something like sometime along those lines. And it's crazy because like food waste, like obviously you don't want to waste food. Like that's money. Like we throw away like a trillion euros every year from just like food. But it has a huge environmental impact as well because at each stage, you have to use petroleum to power farm equipment. You have to use electricity to keep things stored. You need to use fuel to transport things. You need to use plastic or other things to like wrap up the food. You need to keep things cold and that requires electricity as well. And then when you throw it out, it produces methane, which is four times worse than carbon dioxide. So at every stage, it's still like, producing greenhouse gas emissions that is emitting things. And not only that, it also uses so much water and so much land. Like if mm -hmm. we looked at the land that it takes to grow all of the food that we throw away, it is larger than Canada. And we wow. Canada. are facing overpopulation. Exactly, it's huge. And it's not wow. just land, it's water, biodiversity loss. We're cutting down rainforests all to accommodate growing additional food that we're gonna throw away. So yes, we need resources, but we also need to use our resources in a smart way. Definitely. So just to put things into perspective, to really prove that food waste is terrible for our planet. If food waste were a country, it would be the third largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions after China and the U.S. The third Green largest? The third huge. largest. Oh my it's, God. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. And like food loss and waste contribute 6% of the world's global emissions. 6%. And like maybe that doesn't seem very big, but if you think about it, the global aviation, like all air travel, that emits 2% of the global uh, emissions. Yeah. So food loss and waste emits three times more than all of the airplanes in the world every year. Wow, okay, that's an enormous it's problem. Wow, it is a big deal, I, I completely And it's strange because it. we think we don't throw that much away. Like I read an article in the National Geographic talking about how we underestimate our food waste and mm -hmm. underestimate it at different areas. Food yeah. waste that we waste 
in our houses and at different stages of like at restaurants and grocery stores and stuff we're like oh it's not that bad but it is yeah, I mean, it's worse <laughs> it's worse <laughs> well you know what i love about you and your attitude is that you can take um, an enormous a very big serious problem and turn into something positive and with a positive attitude go out there and, and try to solve it so can you tell us, please, what you are working on in Green Bites and how you're proposing to tackle food waste? Absolutely. So as you mentioned, food waste is a wildly enormous problem, which is why we support all the solutions trying to reduce it, because we all need to work together to figure it out at different stages. But mm -hmm. uh, the way that I'm trying to tackle it is through Green Bites. And at Green Bites, we focus specifically at the consumer, like the end of the supply chain of food waste. Mm -hmm. And basically we help restaurants reduce food waste and maximize their profits by telling them how much food to order. Okay. Uh, to do this, uh, we built a but progressive you know? web app. Mm -hmm. okay. How do you know? How do, do you know to tell to a restaurant you have to order that much food? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a couple different things that we have to think about. We have to think about what is in their menu, uh, mm -hmm. how much of everything goes into the menu. We have to think where they get their food from, which distributors. Uh, we also have to think about what they already have because we don't want to like, mm -hmm. double order. And we also have to think about what they're going to have in the future. So mm -hmm. to think about all these things, we built a web application that breaks down the menus, that tracks inventory and that predicts future sales. And okay. the way that we predict future sales is by using artificial intelligence and mm -hmm. the artificial intelligence, the machine learning algorithm that we use takes in past sales data, weather data and COVID-19 statistics <laughs> relevant to our lives today. I was just gonna ask you how you were predicting the sales with the COVID, but I can see that you have it covered. So, I mean, obviously we could not have predicted like before COVID and after COVID, mm -hmm. but now that COVID is part of our daily lives, we can like take in uh, statistics that are published publicly and mm -hmm. feed that into our models. Okay. So you predict how much food the restaurant needs. So what do you do mm -hmm. next? So we predict uh, how much of each, so basically we predict how much of, say you have like a juice store and mm -hmm. you have like a strawberry smoothie, a pineapple smoothie and whatever. And we'll mm -hmm. be like, you're going to sell this many of this smoothie and this many, uh, this many of this other smoothie. And based on that and your menu, we can tell you how much of each ingredient to order. So we're like, mm -hmm. okay, so you're going to need to order this many kilos of pineapples and this many kilos of apples and so on. And we'll basically show this to our users on the web application and they can mm -hmm. look through it and they can make changes. Like we'll make our suggestion okay. based on all the things that we know, but they can be like, oh, I need a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that. Cause maybe they know about a storm, no, not the storm, uh, like a soccer game close by or a reservation that they have. Mm -hmm. So they can make adjustments. And once they approve of the order, they can send it out to all of their distributors through the web application. And that's okay. it. Okay, fascinating. And do you have results uh, of what it, what it means for the restaurants in terms of food waste, but also perhaps in terms of uh, money that they spend? We don't have like a economic calculation yet, but mm -hmm. we have run some tests uh, and have seen that we can reduce 186 kilos of food waste in three days in one restaurant. And the way that we calculate it, it is a lot, it's so much. <laughs> and the way that we calculated that is by seeing how much food one restaurant currently orders mm -hmm. and then making some predictions and then comparing that to what we would have suggested. And that's how we made that calculation. Okay. And it is a huge amount, like it, that comes out to almost two tons of, uh, of food waste in one month. Two tons and in one month for one restaurant? Yeah. Okay, that's a lot. So that will obviously vary from restaurant to restaurant, how much mm -hmm. perishable food they have, like how much is frozen, how much isn't, and how organized they are. But mm -hmm. it's a lot of food waste. <laughs> and but we would love to help with reduce it. it. What, what, it what do they do with it? Just throw it away. Yes. I mean, obviously there's a lot of great solutions for what you can do after, like if things are about to go bad or if things mm -hmm. have gone bad, like there's other applications like Too Good To Go that like 
will take things that are about to go bad and like sell it at a discounted price to like make it more attractive for for consumers. And mm-hmm. there's also other companies like Verandi that makes uh, skin products from old coffee grinds, or there's other companies that make animal feed from old food scraps or mm-hmm. protein bars from older food like bread things. Uh, so there's many, many solutions of how we can mitigate food waste that we're going to produce. Mm-hmm. But it's about having those uh, having those solutions in place and also preventing how much food mm-hmm. needs to be mitigated. So we all need to work together from all the different angles to like reduce the food waste. I, I, I was thinking, perfect, indeed, you have to think about reduction first, not about what you're going to do with this waste that it's produced. So this way we have uh, solutions on both sides yeah and like there's so many solutions that already think about what to do with the food that is wasted and Mm -hmm. we love those solutions but so but we want to make their lives easier and like make it so we reduce as much as we can together Mm -hmm. okay interesting and during the covid times i mean nobody for nobody these times are easy how is it for you in terms of building connections with the restaurants, establishing new partnerships? Is it going okay? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm very thankful. In Iceland, we're doing pretty well. Uh, at the beginning of COVID, like we didn't have this put together. Like we were doing our research and development and putting together our algorithms. So it was mm-hmm. a really good time for us to like put our heads down and like uh, put the solution in motion. But mm-hmm. now we have recently put together like our minimum sellable products. Uh, and we're starting to reach out to restaurants. Um, so the way that our business model works is that mm-hmm. we want to contribute more value than we take. So basically, we want to reduce more costs than what it costs to use our service. Um, okay. And in theory, like it should be economically beneficial as well as environmentally beneficial for the restaurants to use our service, which is especially important right now because like we're about cutting operational costs in a way that mm-hmm. doesn't sacrifice quality. And right now, restaurants really are struggling and cutting costs is super important, which is why, like, not only like even in times of COVID, but especially in times of COVID, a product like ours is really important. Mm -hmm. Okay, indeed, true. The the restaurants have been hit quite hard and have been closed for a very long time. So it's definitely a solution for them to cut costs in the future. So, you know, since your solution exists in Iceland and probably uh, a lot of people who will be listening to this podcast, they are based somewhere else. Tell us when when are you planning to expand and to which countries? What what are your plans for the future? That is a great question. So right now we have plans to expand to a new vertical, which Mm -hmm. is uh, grocery stores. Because they also waste lots of food, which is very... We would like to help with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, In addition to expanding to grocery stores, we also want to expand to mainland Europe. We Mm -hmm. hope to start getting into Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands uh, by the end of this year of 2021. Mm -hmm. Um, And we have chosen those locations because they are actively putting out regulations and calls to reduce food waste, but Mm -hmm. also because within Europe, we have one representative of like the Scandinavian uh, area, one representative of like the Benelux area, and like one representative of the Central European area. So you hopefully once, uh, not on the team, uh, but if we were to expand into those locations, oh, we okay, could like right. start planting the green bite seeds in different <laughs> parts of Europe. <laughs> okay, that makes sense indeed, cool. So by the end of the year, you will you will start launching in different yes. places. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. And um, in terms, let's go back a little bit in terms of the food stores. So if for the restaurants, you look at the menu and what, what they need, um, what will you look at with the food stores? So for the food stores, we will look at their inventory uh, and their past sales as well. Um, mm-hmm. Mostly we've noticed that there's more data, so it's actually, it can be a little bit more accurate and we don't have to do this extra step of, mm-hmm. um, of doing this menu breakdown. 
though we are focusing specifically on perishable items. So like fruits, okay. vegetables, meat, fish, and dairy products. Um, mm -hmm. Cause that's what we want to, that's what goes bad the, the quickest. And we want to help save that. Uh, that is our priority. Um, yeah. Well, those are the, also the ones that have the lar uh, one of the largest emissions. If you look at the meat and dairy products. So absolutely. Definitely. So if you're going to produce the meat, you might as well use it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get. <Yeah>. Makes sense. <laughs> Okay. I mean, also, like, it could be uh, in the future, like, long, long term, it could mm -hmm. be interesting to, like, see long term consumer demands mm -hmm. and maybe make long term predictions. Like, right now, we make short term predictions for the next seven days. But if we have, like, 10, 20 years of data, which some stores have, we can make long-term predictions about the trends of the kind of food people want. And maybe if we're in large enough stores, we can influence the type of food that is produced. Like if we can tell that more people are eating more vegetarian foods and there is a trend, we can maybe take this information and deliver it straight to the, the ranchers and the farmers and be like, this is about how much we think we'll need. And it also goes hand in hand with policy because mm -hmm. um, at least in the e EU, um, there is a lot of subsidy uh, subsidies for farming. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's like the space subsidy. And then there's also like extra subsidies that are given for certain crops. But sometimes the crops that the EU subsidizes are not crops that people have a high demand of. So they're actually okay. like artificially inflating <laughs> the demand for these crops and creating more food waste by making farmers think that like more of this is necessary. Mm -hmm. So if we can help them make more informed decisions about which crops to subsidize, we can also reduce the food waste substantially. But this is very long term. No, but I, but I love dreams. the idea. I love the idea of restaurants, grocery stores, and potentially regulators to see mm -hmm. which indeed food products to subsidize based on what people actually mm -hmm. eat. So I, I think it's like a the great magic idea. Of big data, because like we can eventually like, like we can eventually take huge stores of data and like really understand people, uh, in a general term. Mm -hmm. and try to bring together interdisciplinary uh, backgrounds of legislation and engineering and computer scientists and mm -hmm. people in sales and all these different ways to like come together and solve a unified goal, which is why I put so much emphasis in talking about why food waste is a problem, because I want mm -hmm. to impress upon people that we really do have to come together to solve it. Yeah, definitely. And but we can't. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can. If we can make this a problem this big, we can solve a problem this big. Yeah, definitely. I think we just have to see that it's a big enough a problem to tackle and what mm -hmm. are the benefits that it will bring, not just in terms of the reduction of waste or reduction of CO2 emissions, but benefits in terms of money, right? Because we live in, in the world where economic growth matters and money is, is something that is going to sell. Um, and that's the best way to, to position the benefits of implementing any type of solution. Absolutely. Um, and, and we have stumbled upon a, solu a rare solution that is both mm -hmm. economically and environmentally feasible. And I'm totally in agreement that if we want to push our environmental agenda forward, we have to start convincing the non-believers <laughs> who don't really care for the environment, but will care about their, their losses and their profits. So uh yeah <laughs> excellent you know i love how simple it is how much benefit it gives <laughs> to everyone and basically it, it relies also on the big data for good which is an ideal merge of the digital transformation that we are going through which also helps the climate change renata and for for those of us that do not have yet the possibility to use your amazing and simple solution um and but yet looking into a ways of reducing food waste. And I'm talking about consumers, I'm talking about businesses, and I'm talking about regulators. What can you recommend? What can they do uh, in implement uh, to reduce food waste and help climate change? So I'll start off with the consumers because the consumers and the businesses have a very similar solution. 
or some mm -hmm. solutions that can be implemented. And I would start off by organization. And mm -hmm. what I mean by organization is maybe having meal planning and also knowing what you have in your own fridge. Um, so quite often like things that we have go bad because we forget that they are in our fridge. So that is one way that meal planning can be, uh, meal planning is shown to be really good for <laughs> health, but it can also be really good for reducing food waste. Because if you have an idea of what you're going to eat throughout the week, you can go to the grocery store and have like a really organized uh, amount of food of, that you buy and you prepare your food and then you eat it throughout the week or mm -hmm. ha like half of the week. Um, also in terms of organization, uh, there's this uh, first in first out <laughs> principle. So like the first thing that goes into your fridge, those are the first ones that you should, that you should eat. Mm -hmm. um, and also knowing about storage, storing food is like kind of complicated um, because okay. everything is like, it doesn't have to be, but uh, when you think about it, like some things should be frozen and some things should be in this uh, temperature and some things hold better in water. Uh, so just knowing about different storage methodologies and how you should be storing fresh produce is really helpful. Like for mm -hmm. example, if you cut up carrots, um, they last really well if you put them in water in your fridge really um, mm -hmm. here is my piece of wisdom for today cutting carrots <laughs> and putting them in water for example and like they stay all nice and crunchy so like you're more likely to eat them if they like taste fresh and nice and then certain things uh shouldn't be next to each other i feel like bananas and something else shouldn't be next to each other i can't I remember apples, off the top apples. that sounds right uh because they give off certain chemicals that aren't ha like that the other fruits don't like uh, so just making sure that you're not storing things that shouldn't be next to each other and having things in the right way is really helpful for reducing food waste. Mm -hmm. And on a large scale, like le regulation wise, I would say that there's a lot of things that can be done. From a regulatory perspective, I would love to see more regulation, both encouraging, um, encouraging waste reduction, but also making, allowing more transparency for how to properly dispose of things. Mm -hmm. um, Cause this may not be like a food waste specific thing, but for example, I find recycling very confusing cause it changes from city to city and country to country. And some things are not recyclable here and they are there and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's the same with bio waste. Like, uh, here in Iceland, I never know what to do with my bio waste, so I ended up composting, um, which is fine, uh, and it is easier to do than people would think, so that is also another great household tip to reducing food waste, whatever you can't eat or like food scraps, uh, you can compost it and you can mm -hmm. plant nice food or have like a com community composting. Uh, area because maybe you don't have a garden and maybe someone else would want your the nutrients from your old food definitely uh, mm -hmm. so that's what I would want to see I want more like encouragement to reduce the food waste uh, in the form of regulation and I would like to see more transparency and how to properly dispose of different things okay sounds like a good start so that we can hold on until the green bites come and conquer every country in europe right that is the plan <laughs> <laughs> excellent well renata um can you share more on where we can we can find you or where we can find bring green bites how we can follow information about your work of course, you can check out our website at greenbites.is, green bites spelled green and B-Y-T-E-S. And you can also follow us on Instagram. We are RVK underscore green bites. Okay, awesome. I especially love your Instagram because it's very visual in terms of highlighting the food based program and you have really some great drawings in there um wow jill makes too. those i'm gonna tell her she's <laughs> so happy okay excellent well listen it was wonderful to to speak with you today i thank you very much for all the wisdom and for sharing 
your experience in the energy sector and uh, machine learning and then how it all brought to your fight um, towards food waste. And I want to wish you lots of success uh, in terms of your expansion into the grocery store area and into different countries in Europe. And I cannot wait to hear more about your successes. Thank you very much for having me in this wonderful talk.